Oh. Why don't why don't we like that? All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Steve Cameron. Steve, thank you for thank joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, how are thank you, doing you for today? having me. Dude, doing really, really good. You know, just been uh, hanging out at home, not doing too much, so I'm well rested. That's good. Yeah, like yeah. everybody should do that, right? So I've been, I've been asked a bunch of times, like, should I be going riding? Shouldn't I be? And the answer is no. You shouldn't be going riding if you don't have to. Stay indoors, because if you get hurt, the last place you want to go is the hospital, but that's the first place you got to go. Right. That was, yeah. I was discussing with friends as well. They, they want to go outside. They want to do trail riding. I mean, like, ah, you break your leg, right? You, you're going, <laughs> going to the hospital. Yeah. It's not where like, you want to be. That day that Sam Bendall came out and rode with me, he didn't plan on breaking his leg, but he did it. Right. Yeah. Anyhow. Steve, I was always wondering how you got actually into motorcycling. I never, I never heard that. Oh man. So, um, my, I was away at the Marine Corps. I was always into motorcycles, basically just for quarter mile speed. I just wanted the fastest thing I could get my hands on. But then, um, mm -hmm. oh, hang on one second. I have to find that. So then, um, as time went on, I went to the Marine Corps and when I came home, my dad had a 1974 CB 550 laying around that he, he bought in pieces, assembled it and put it together. And that's how, um, that's how I got started. He let me ride it around a little bit. So I didn't actually start riding motorcycles until I was 20 years old. Oh, really? That late? So like three years ago? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just a few months ago, really. <laughs> yeah. But you, you're very known that you ride mostly adventure bike, like big adventure bikes. Why is it? Yeah. Um, two things. One, I actually didn't buy my adventure bike to start adventure bike riding. I bought it to be the two-up sport touring champion of the world. Mm -hmm. Um. And I did that. I did 7,000 miles in a year, all actually like 7,500, all pleasure miles. Mm -hmm. No going to work, no commuting, all fun trips. And then um, later on, it, it, I went to one ADV ride. It was um, Alt Riders, uh, Conserve the Ride in Pennsylvania. And after that, it was over. That's all I wanted to do was adventure ride. Like, I mean, I, I basically finished... I started every story and finished every story with this one time at Alt Riders Conserve the Ride. Mm -hmm. And ever since then, I've just been doing that. All right. Is there, is there one favorite adventure bike? Is there one bike that you prefer? Or are you saying that is the best? So um, it really depends on what you want to do with your adventure motorcycle. Um, I get to ask that question quite a bit. Sometimes it's, you know, what it is usually what's the best adventure motorcycle on that. It's what you want to do with your adventure bike. So you kind of got to slow down and really ask yourself what you're going to do with it. And that's going to change anyway. You're going to go from, oh, I want my adventure bike to go off road, or I just want to do some gravel roads. And then it's going to evolve into you doing harder stuff. So you kind of got to be a grown up and think about where you really want to be. Uh, but there is an adventure bike that fits every situation except for the Moto Guzzi Stelvio. Um, I don't know where that fits. Yeah. Besides that bike, I can, I, can, can, I can recommend a bike for somebody, you know, in any way possible. Like if they're like, I want to do adventure bike riding and track days, get the Multistrada 1260 Enduro. Yeah. <laughs> See how that works? See how that works? You could do that. So adventure bikes are really versatile. If you just want to go in the woods and race and, and ride your adventure bike as hard as possible, like really you should probably just get a KTM 690. Mm-hmm. So there's a two way different opposite ends of the spectrum. So the best adventure bike is the one that fits you the best. What, um, what are your current bikes? What kind of bikes do you have right now? Currently I have a uh, Triumph Scrambler 1200 XC. Mm -hmm. um, I have a Husky Terra 650 that I stole from a friend, legally stole, but stole it. Um, <laughs> I have a, it's the worst bike on the planet without a doubt. Um, I have it. It's for sale or you could just come steal it. It doesn't matter. It's actually that guy's but anyway. Um, mm -hmm. And then I have that Suzuki DR 200, which oh, is yeah. that really small dirt bike. Yep. Uh, that thing's basically a mountain bike with a mo lawnmower engine in it. Mm -hmm. um, and then I've got that KTM 250 EXCF four stroke, which is my dirt bike. And then uh, that's pretty much it for the bikes that I own. I also have access to a couple others, but that's, those are the important ones. Mm-hmm. 
you not only uh, ride motorcycles, you also film your trips, your adventures, and you also do like motorcycle reviews. So can you give us a little bit more details what camera you use and do you have a team who's working with you to, to produce these kind of videos? How do you do it? So um, the video thing evolved from, uh, I wanted to get a camera, uh, just a DSLR camera. And then, you know, everybody takes really good photos. There's so many talented photographers out there. So I was like, how am I gonna differentiate myself? And I said, oh, I'll do, I'll do video. Mm -hmm. So I, I went out and I bought a Panasonic G85, which I got around here somewhere. Um, I actually broke it on my last trip. Uh, so I got to buy a new one. It, yeah, it's broke. Um, but that, that camera's lasted me three years. And I mean, I abused it. So um, I said, how am I going to differentiate myself? So what I did was mm -hmm. I went to a press launch and I decided I was going to shoot video at it. And I was going to shoot my own stand up, and I had my little tripod. And um, I got my inspirations from Casey Neistat. I mean, you could see that through my video adventures by film styles you know when i do the uh when i do this the slide in and the hey what's up guys you know and the, <laughs> or i do the clap and then all my stuff comes off that's that's a casey neistat influence um mm -hmm. but i really did learn a lot from that guy so um cell phones and then a lot of uh i use a lot of senna um action cameras in the beginning and i mean they're really not great action cameras the the mm -hmm. footage that comes out of them is not that great but it's more about the editing so I bought this camera, I took it home, I took it on the trip, took it home, and I said to myself, what am I gonna do? Um, and so I ordered a brand new MacBook Pro because I had to edit all this footage. And that is what really kickstarted everything for me. I, I went and I got it, my first credit card, and then I maxed it out right away. <laughs> um, which is another, I mean, typical Casey Neistat story, right? Like that's what that dude did. Yeah, nice. So, um, and, and uh, now I've stepped it. Now I do want to say I have stepped it up to the uh, GoPro Hero 8, and I go into the settings and mess with it. And dude, the footage that comes out of that is phenomenal. It's like cheating, mm -hmm. it's really, really good. Super versatile, little powerful camera. Yeah, um, actually, I got it right here. Yeah. And I put that little, put that little windsock on there, and that makes all the that's the magic right there. That's it. And so on your YouTube channel, the best performing videos are your uh, reviews on bikes. So yeah. um, can we expect more from this coming up? So um, my two best videos is the Tiger and the Africa Twin Adventure Sports. Um, and a close third, I've got the ADV rally, but that's because that was a Bonnier event. So Bonnier is a media company and they own Cycle World and Motorcyclist online. So um, I did get a bump from those media outlets, which was really great. You know, I know all those guys over there. Um, that video currently sits at like 50,000 views in almost no time. But um, what you do want to do and you kind of have to do is you have to hit that clickbaity thing that people are going to search. So what are people going to mm -hmm. search? Um, hey, what's up, Brad? I saw you just joined. Um, so people are going to search that, you know, Tiger 800 video or the Tiger 900 video or the BMW F850 video. And, and so I do like doing those because they do get a lot of engagement. But right now what I'm seeing is that a lot of people are stuck at home. And uh, it's been really cool because I actually get a chance to kind of interact with people more. Um, you know, I just uploaded a video from Mojave and I was at ADV Days. And I mean, the views are going really good, but it's people that are stuck at home that can't go out and ride. And man, it's really actually really cool to just interact with everybody. So I'm, I'm actually really enjoying making some longer cuts too, because my specialty was always take 40 minutes of video and compress it down into 10. Mm -hmm. um, but now I'm letting my videos breathe and they're, they're coming out pretty great. Yeah, you uh, you grow a lot. Yeah, I I remember last year when I checked, you had like three thousand followers on YouTube. Now you're close to six thousand followers. Is there a specific yeah. goal that you're trying to reach? If if the goal was subscribers, I would I would be reviewing, you know, MacBook Pros and GoPros <laughs> and um, sport bikes and Jixers and stuff. I think um, so. It's kind of hard to to get behind that. Um, so when you say like, what's the specific goal? Um, I mean, I would like to try to earn a little bit of income from some of the stuff that I do. I mean, I put a ton of work into it. Like um, the video that I uploaded um, yesterday, 
I have 50 hours into it. It's 41 minutes long, which is longer than most, but most of my videos take 20 to 50 hours of editing. And that's all done by myself. I do all my own shooting, yeah. all my own editing, and it, it just takes a ton of time. So I guess a goal of mine is to, um, is to get to a point where I can maybe get a brand deal and, and somebody, because I mean, obviously it has influence in the ways of like, you know, what's cool, what's not cool. Mm. Um, and so, you know, brands recognize it. I do get a lot of help from OEMs. Like I can pick up the phone and um, I can actually call like BMW. I can actually call Honda and say, hey guys, like I need a, I'm flying out here. I need a bike. Um, and they really support me and they support that because of the hard work that I've been doing. And it's been, it's been over three years of it. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I've actually want to, I just want to say, I've actually broken, I thought about this today because I was, I wanted to answer this question. You didn't ask it, but um, <laughs> the edit, <laughs> the editing stuff, I broke four 13 inch MacBook pros in two and a half years. Oh, wow. Of ju just shoving footage through them and back out the other side. So now I've got the 16 inch and, yeah. and the thing runs really good, but yeah, that's the kind of commitment that goes into that stuff. Oh, wow. Jesus. You just mentioned that your recent, uh, your latest video that was in the course raw height ADV days, this is where you were. Yes. Can you give yeah. us a little bit more details what it's about? So, um, raw height is actually one of the, they're the only, I gotta be careful how I word this. Cause the Germans love that stuff. You know how that goes. <laughs> um, um, the, the thing about the BMW is um, BMW has certified trainers and then they have a certified off-road riding school. Now the certified off-road riding school is, um, is Rawhide. They're the only certified off-road riding school that BMW like backs. So Rawhide has this tremendous amount of clout. Um, they, they really engage a the community. They've like, they're one of the names that you know right away. Like when you get into the adventure bikes, like the first thing you see is like climb, mm. And then you see the Continental TKC 80s, <laughs> BMW, BMWs, and then like Rawhide is right there with it. Um, so they put on this event in Mojave um, out in California. It was only like two and a half hours outside of LA. Pretty cool location, but it's like a mecca for off-road riding. There is, it's 360 degrees of just the best riding around you. Mm -hmm. And you, you won't see everything out there in a month. It's, mm -hmm. it's really that big and massive and vast and it's get on the bike and point it in a direction and go. Mm -hmm. You got a, if I got that right, you got a Africa twin this time. Honda provided you Africa twin. Yeah. Honda gave me an Africa twin adventure sports. Um, I got a feeling that that bike was like on its way out to a, like a, whoever wants to bid on it. Mm -hmm. um, because when I was there picking up the bike, they had, they had just gotten in the new Africa twin 1100s. Um, and I got to see them look at them a little bit. They look really, really good. Mm -hmm. Um, I've always been a fan of the Africa twin. Actually the regular Africa twin with the DCT is a lot of fun. I did a uh, video shoot with Revit with one of those. Mm -hmm. Um, the first day we did that shoot, we were in Moab for 17 hours straight mm -hmm. of shooting. And, uh, I remember <laughs> going through a, uh, Wendy's drive through one handed, on the, on the automatic DCT Africa <laughs> twin at like 11 o'clock at night, like just give me some food and I got to go to bed. But um, <laughs> I, I really actually do. I, I really do like the, uh, the Africa twins are pretty, they're pretty good. Um, the adventure sports have, just has that big fat tank on it, which, you know, a lot of the adventure people love, they love that stuff. Um, you know, how many gallons can it hold seven, eight, nine, like, you know, um, but it's, it's cool. Cause you go down the road, you pass up gas stations. Yeah. So um, yeah, the ride out Mojave was, it was, it was good because that one was more focused on the culture. So like you show up, there's a ton of vendors there mm -hmm. and, and there's all those, like, there's, there's the people you see, like there's a tight, super tight knit community on Facebook. It's like really, you know, the big players in that. And then, uh, so all those people kind of get together on and you'll see them there. You'll be like, Hey, I know you from Facebook. So yeah, yeah. always fun to see those people like uh, Josh Jones and then uh, Gina and the rest of the gang. So um, for people that are new into adventure riding or just starting into uh, adventure riding, do you have any tips, recommendation for them? Let's see. I mean, if you're, do you have a bike yet or you don't have a bike? Let's go, we have a bike, we have a bike. You got a bike, okay. My recommendation would be to 
try to get yourself to a off-road riding school. Mm -hmm. And if you can't do that, usually you can get yourself to an event and then that event will have an off-road riding school. So mm -hmm. um, that's the most important thing I can make up for, uh, you know, a lack of equipment, lack of tires, you know, the motorcycle doesn't have to be the best. You can make up for all of that with skills to, to a pretty large extent too. Um, where most people fall short is they're, they're intimidated. They're too timid and they, they start getting worked up and then they, they don't know which hands doing which, and they just, they just lose their mind. And the next thing you know, they're in a little bit of sand and they crash. And um, the adventure bikes like to be ridden in a commanding way. So my, my advice is always to do all the off-road rider training you can do. I've done, I think I've done five or six intro classes oh, really? and, and I still, every chance I get, I do one. I did one last one I did was 2018. So two years ago. Nice. All right. All right, Steve. That were all my questions that I have. I That's all the these. questions you got. What? <laughs> That's all the questions you got. The people are here, man. <laughs> People are here. Sometimes you have to keep it short, you know? Okay. Steve, Steve thank you so much for joining. And for the people Yeah, thanks, JP. This is a lot of fun. About, yeah. For the people who want to find out more about Steve, uh, he has a great YouTube channel where he's posting regular. Go on his Instagram, follow him. He's very funny on his live stories. And if you're out in the woods somewhere at the East Coast, I'm pretty sure you, you will bounce into, into him. Steve. Yeah, and I uh, just want to say, JP, congratulations on your video with Magnus Walker. Uh, if, if anybody hasn't seen that, I know all my friends have because they won't shut up about it, and I can't stand hearing about it anymore. <laughs> but uh, head over to JP's uh, or Magnus Walker's YouTube channel. You'll see some of JP's work. Awesome work, man. Congratulations on that. Awesome. See you. See all you right, man. Thank you very much. <laughs> Live ugly, fake your death. Take care, man. Bye-bye. See you, bro.